Well, welcome. I am Mr. Murphy, and in this lesson, we're going to be looking at lesson 1.5, which is all about how to solve equations by using graphs. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So in this first example, we're asked to, again, use a graph to solve an equation. So our equation is negative 3x plus 20 equals 5. Now, I know we could solve this algebraically, but the idea here is to understand how to solve this graphically. It's actually, if you're wondering why in the world we have to do some of this, um, it's it's going to get trickier as we go through this lesson, but it's also going to be one of the techniques we're going to look at in the next lesson, uh, not uh, so for lesson 1.6. Um, so let's start. What we're going to do is we're going to break this equation up into two separate equations. Um, so the first equation, we would just do the left side, negative 3x plus 20, and the second equation would be the right side of the equation, just the y equals, so we'd have y equals 5. So if I graph negative 3x plus 20, now if you notice, that is in slope-intercept form. So we can start with our y-intercept being 20, and our slope would be negative 3. So we would go down 3, down 3 units, and over 1. Now recognize um, that with the equations that we, or with the graph that I have, um, the y-axis is not counting by 1s. So we're not going to go down 3 squares and over 1 square. We go down 3 units and over 1 unit, because the x-axis is counting by 1s. So your graph would look something like this. All right, so that would be the first graph, actually, just the first one there. So now the second graph is going to be y equals 5. And so this would be your equation of y equals 5. Now what that is saying there, that paragraph to the right, it says uh, these values will have x values that produce the same y values for both equations. So in other words, we're looking for they intersect. Okay, we're looking for where they intersect at. So each of the x values is a solution to the original equation. So we only have one intersection here. So our one solution is that x equals 5. So if I put 5 into the original equation, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and negative 15 plus 20, sure enough, is 5. So 5 would be our solution. Now we can use this concept, like I said, to do more difficult graphs. So like this one here, we have the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 1 half x plus 1. So we're going to solve this by graphing. Now technically, we could do this algebraically too but it'll be a little bit trickier. Where by doing this by graphing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this up into two separate equations. So we'd have the absolute value of x minus four is gonna be one equation, and one half x plus one would be our second equation. Now with the absolute value of x minus four, now we did that earlier in this chapter. Remember, this just represents a translation. If we have x minus four, am I gonna move the graph to the left or to the right? Now, if you said to the left, you're making that common mistake. Okay, because it says x minus 4, remember that minus 4 is happening directly with the x. We do the opposite of what our uh, brain would, or what we would expect to do. Um, and so we have to tell our brain to do the opposite here. So instead of moving to the left 4 units, we would move it to the right 4 units. So our vertex would be there at 4. Then we'd have two straight lines going up from that vertex uh, that have a slope of 1. Whoops. Uh, so we'd get our v there. Okay, so that would be our first graph. Now, the second graph, that one has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 1 half. Now my grid here does count by 1s on both the x and y axis, so it makes it a little bit easier compared to the previous one. So we're going to have a y-intercept of 1, and then we would go um, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2 to get the other points. And, where the, and now you can see that these two graphs intersect at two different places. So that means that there's two possible answers for x. So we would have both of those spots where x equals 2 and where x equals 10. And now you can plug both of those into your original equation and you would find that both of those would make true statements. So that's how you could check your work. That's the nice thing about doing some of these is you can always plug your numbers in and make sure that it actually works out. All right, your turn. So I want you to try both of these by graphing. Okay, even though that first one, letter A, um, I know you could do that algebraically and probably get your answer a lot faster, but I don't want, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to do both of these by graphing. Now that second one here, I had to move to make space for my little video screen. Um, but for that second one, you're going to have to go back and remember how we did uh, some of those different uh, transformations, because here we have a negative outside the absolute value. So you're going to want to review what that does uh, to the graph of your absolute value function. But I want you to look to see, again, graphically where those two intersection points would be uh, for letter B. So I want you to pause this video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've done both of these correctly. All right, how'd we do? Let's look at that first one. So with that first one, 
you would have gotten x equals 3. So you'd have y equals 3, that would be the easy one. That would be a horizontal line. The, set, the first graph, 5x minus 12, would have a y-intercept of negative 12 and a slope of 5. So we would go up 5 units to the right one, up 5 units to the right one, and so on. Um, in that one, the y-axis did count by 1, so it did make that a little easier. And then they intersect where x equals 3. So you just have that first solution there would be x equals 3. The second one, now what I was getting at earlier was that, yes, x minus 2 means we're going to move it to the right 2 units. But that minus in front of there means we're going to flip it over the x-axis. So the vertex would be at uh, 2, 0, but then the v would be going downwards. And then we would have the second equation. We would have a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of negative 1 half. So we go down 1 to the right 2, down 1 to the right 2, down 1 to the right 2, and so on. And you get your two intersection points at x equals 0 and x equals 8. So that is how you'd find those solutions. All right, now this time we're going to use a graphing calculator to get our solution. So for this one, we're going to graph negative x squared plus 8x minus 13 equals the absolute value of x minus 4. Now just like before, we're going to do this using two separate equations. Um, so we're going to have one equation that we're going to graph using negative x squared plus 8x minus 13. And the second equation is going to be the absolute value of x minus 4. Now, I'm having problems right now with my computer. Um, and I'm not able to get my TI Inspire calculator to be able to graph properly using my computer. So I will do that on a separate video. But you can also use Desmos. Now during a quiz or a test you will not have that option. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, so if you have a TI Inspire calculator or a di different calculator, you want to make sure that you either do a YouTube search on how to uh, find an intersection point using whatever graphing calculator you have. It would be a really easy search. You'll be able to find other teachers that have created those videos for whatever calculator you're using. Otherwise, if you're using a TI Inspire calculator, I will have a video separate uh, for that. Uh, but otherwise, I will show you how to do this very easily using Desmos. All right, so here we are in Desmos. If you've noticed, I already have these two graphs for us. So you just want to make sure that you type those equations in properly. Um, I want to point out to you the absolute value, the second equation there. Notice how to type in whether you're using... Um, Desmos or any calculator, this is how you're going to type in absolute value, A, B, S, and then parentheses. Uh, the calculator will know that instead of parentheses, it should do absolute value. Um, it's just that A, B, S is the term we use or the symbols we use to tell our calculators we're doing absolute value. All right, so you type in letters A, B, S, and then parentheses X minus 4 to get the absolute value of X minus 4. All right, so if you look over there on the right, you can see the two graphs. Now, the nice thing about Desmos, if you, if you want to find where they intersect at, you just drag your uh, cursor over. If you click on it, um, it'll keep that point there. We can click on this one too. And so we can see that the two x values would be 2.697 and 5.303. So you can see that there's certain times where we're going to want to use a graphing calculator because unlike the previous graphs that we did, these two didn't intersect at nice little grid lines. They intersected at decimal points. So we want to be more precise by using our graphing calculator. All right, let's go back to our notes. All right, so if you were using a like a TI-84, this is what your graphing screen would look like. But again, your solutions are just those X values. And technically, the decimals would have been even bigger than what we had. Um, so that's why they have the approximate uh, symbol there. So X would be approximately 2.697, and X would be approximately 5.303. All right, I want you guys to try one on your own. So why don't you guys go ahead and get out whatever technology that you're using, preferably your graphing calculator, so in that way you're practicing with the tool that you'll be using on the quiz or on the test. Uh, but otherwise, pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. All right, I'm not going to show you the graphing screen, but uh, you guys should have been able to do that on your own. But for this one, you would have gotten your two solutions are negative 3.303 and 1.791. All right, that ends this video. Um, so that is the first day of lesson one, uh, lesson 1.5. So good luck as you work on today's assignment. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at the second part of this, which is going to involve some graphing of inequalities. So like I said, good luck as you work on your homework.